Hello everyone. It's time to start a first sketchbook and uh, this, as you probably know, will be a series of drawings that you make um, in terms of imaginary linear perspective. So we're not looking at things, we're imagining them and constructing them according to the rules, which is a great way to begin because you're not constrained by having to make something look like something else. You're just making it up as you go along and using the uh, rules of linear perspective to do it. So I've prepared a series of images that I think will um, help you through this process. So let's get started. Here's our house. I just want you to get a good idea of the kind of house we're drawing. We're imagining that a person standing next to the house is about this high in relation to the house. This is important because remember, everything in linear perspective is related to eye level. The person is half as tall as the bottom story of the house, and the top story is exactly as tall as the bottom story. We'll come back to that. Here's another way of thinking about the house. Front, side, top. If you look at the diagram on the right, the top of the house, we're going to use that to talk about location and line of sight, which are two essential conditions upon which a linear perspective drawing is based. X marks our location a little way from the house. We can stay in that location and look in any direction by directing our line of sight in any direction, but there are good and bad choices. One good choice is to look directly at the corner. We call this line of sight oblique in relation to the planes of the house. Oblique means that we are facing the walls of the house at an angle, not parallel to the walls, not perpendicular, but at an angle. This is just a quick sketch to show you what happens when you look at something from an oblique angle. So this is the house as we will develop it in our drawing. Here is what the final product will look like. Now at this point you might want to pause and make sure you have paper, pencil, and ruler because I'd like you to set things up so that you can follow along um, on your own paper and do exactly uh, what I describe. We start with a blank piece of paper oriented horizontally and we are going to draw a horizontal line from one side of the paper to the other. Your pencil line should be located about a third of the way from the bottom. It should go right off the edge of the paper on the left and on the right, and this line represents the eye level. Since this is a two-point perspective drawing, make a little tiny X on each side of the line where it runs off the paper. These two X's are the vanishing points for our two-point perspective drawing. Now we draw a long vertical line on the paper from the top to the bottom, a little to the right of the middle of the paper. Make sure this is a light line. All of your lines should be drawn lightly because we won't be erasing anything. This vertical line represents the corner of the house that we are facing, the one closest to us. Now we get to decide about the size of our drawing of the house. We can't make it too big on our paper or it will look distorted. We can't make it too small either. I mean, we could, but uh, we want it to be just right. So um, it will take some getting used to as far as making these choices. Remember that I mentioned the importance of eye level and that the person next to the house was half as tall as the first floor. That's important information because we need to know that for this next step. Pick a point um, on your vertical line that's not too far below eye level and um, then mark that and then you want to put a line above eye level that's exactly the same distance um, that the other point is below it. So we have two halves. That, that makes it so that we're right in the middle of the house at eye level. You've just determined the size of your house, by the way, and everything else will correspond to that choice. The next thing 
we do is connect the points we just made with the vanishing point on the left and on the right. Use your ruler to draw lines from each point to each of the vanishing points and make sure that your lines are only barely visible. Um, these are construction lines and we are going to darken the important parts of them later on. Now we decide on the side edges of the house. You can make this up, but you have to make sure that the right side is about a, th a third as wide as the left side. And um, so you want to draw long vertical lines to mark, mark each of those sides. Now we're ready to darken for emphasis and you want to darken only the part of the line that um, is a visible edge. So go ahead and, and darken those edges. And you'll notice that you already have this really magical illusion of three dimensions um, on your two-dimensional piece of paper. The next step is to put a roof on the house. And the best way to start is to draw the gable. That's the triangular section under the roof on the right wall of the house. And we need to determine where the peak of that gable is located. We know that it is exactly in line with the middle of the wall. So if we find the middle, we can draw a vertical line through the middle of that wall. And we know that the peak is going to be somewhere on that line. Here's where we apply the technique that I call finding the middle. On the right wall, we draw diagonal lines from each corner to the opposite corner. And where those lines intersect, we have the middle. So, um, if, and it's in perspective, which is great. So we can um, draw a vertical line through that intersection of those lines, and we're a lot closer to finding the peak. We don't know how high it is, but it's somewhere along that line. So we know that the top story is exactly as high as the bottom story. And if we look along the middle line that we just drew, we can just transfer that line segment that goes from floor to ceiling, take that segment and, um, and transfer it from floor to peak. So it's the same size. So you just go ahead and do that and you've got now the peak of um, the roof, mark that, and then draw lines down from the peak to the corners of the wall, the top corners of the wall. It's important at this point um, that you draw a line now from the peak of the roof back to the left vanishing point, and this gives you the ridge line of the roof, but uh, we don't know where the line ends, so just draw it lightly and we're going to figure out the rest in just a minute. The next step, um, it might seem easy, and when I ask students about this, they usually come up with a quick answer, but you know they're all wrong answers. It's actually a little bit more complicated than it seems. So what we need to do is we need to find the gable on the other side, the, the peak of that um, other side of the roof. But we can't simply make it up, and we can't just take um, you know a line that's parallel to the line that we've already made, um, the angle of the roof. That doesn't work either. Um, so what we have to do is construct the back wall of the house and find the middle of that wall the same way we did for the, um, the right side. So um, now at this point I just have to say prepare yourself for um, some line fatigue because there are going to be lines everywhere it seems and you will feel that and it won't be pleasant but um, just get used to it um, with practice your mind adapts to it and so it won't be a problem. So to render the back wall, uh, which will actually be invisible in our finished drawing, um, draw lines from the bottom left corner of the house to the opposite vanishing point and do the same for the right. So you have these lines going across, across each other and um, what we have now that you've drawn those lines is a rendering of the floor on the inside of the house. And we're getting closer 
to finding that back wall. The next step might be a little difficult depending on how you've set your drawing up. Look for the back corner of the floor where those two lines intersect and um, use your ruler to draw a vertical line up through that point of intersection and just just draw it all the way up. You're not sure where it's going to stop so don't worry about that. Um, next what you want to do is draw a line from the upper left corner of the wall to the right vanishing point. And this, this gives you the top edge of that back wall. And with that, you have the whole wall. It may, however, be a little bit hard to see with all those lines. So what I want you to do is look carefully at it and um, identify each corner of that wall with some little um, darker points. Don't go overboard with it, just so that you can see without having to sort through all of the lines. You know where that is. And then draw diagonals for that wall to find the middle. Then you draw the vertical line up, and where it intersects the roof line, that's where the peak is. And um, now you can darken the lines of the roof as you did for the lines of the first story. And what you've got is a solid looking, three dimensional looking, amazing linear perspective drawing. Well, we're not done yet, but I just wanted to say that you've done the kind of drawing that just fired up the Renaissance masters. So we still need to put in um, some details. I'd like you to draw a window and a door. Uh, the door you can figure out on your own, but the window I'm going to help you with. Um, so this window is a long horizontal window divided into four, uh, four panes of equal size. And so the problem will be drawing those four panes in perspective. And um, so as you can imagine, since they're seen in perspective, they will look, they will look smaller and smaller as you go from right to left. So the first thing to do is to make the outline of your window by deciding where the top and bottom of the window will be. And you get to decide this. I would say draw a point on the wall for the top of the window and a point on the wall for the bottom and then just connect those points with the vanishing point on the left. And now um, decide how long the window is going to be. You just decide where the window starts and stops on the right and the left and um, draw vertical lines um, where that's going to be. So now you have your window outline and you can go ahead and darken that um, for emphasis so you can see it more clearly. Now, um, to make the four panes of equal size, it's a little bit of a challenge, but you already pretty much know how to do it if you really think about it. And actually, at this point, you could pause the video and try to f figure it out on your own. Or you can simply continue here and I'll show you how. So rendering the panes is actually just a matter of finding the middle. So first you find the middle of the whole window and you know you do that by drawing lines from corner to corner and where they intersect, that's the middle. And then, so draw that in and darken it and then you just find the middle for both of those um, two halves that you now have and it's a perfect rendering of all four of those panes. So darken that for emphasis and go on and put your door in and that's it. I hope you enjoyed it.